Hi folks, I'm Glyn Jewis and welcome to episode 80 of my video podcast. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so in this episode, what I want to do is show you a couple of techniques I've used on the pitch you can see on screen now. And this is one that I've called Battered, and it's kind of like a mixed martial arts themed shoot where the two guys in the pitch are supposed to look as if they're really battering the hell out of each other. And you can see that by the injuries that we've actually added onto them. So if I just zoom in onto the guys here, you can see that there's blood on his chest, he's got scratches on his back. This guy's even got a nosebleed, he's even got a bit of a swollen eye and some blood on his head as well. So I want to show you how I've done that because that wasn't how it was at the original photo shoot. The picture you can see on screen now is the final finished retouch, but the one kind of like out of Lightroom is this one here. And you can see that their skin is very clean and completely free of injuries and blood. So I want to show you how we do that. And we do that using brushes, but I'm not actually going to use a brush that is provided by default within Photoshop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to Google, and this is what I did with this image. Go to Google, and I'm literally just gonna type in, you can see at the top here, I'm gonna type in free blood spatter brushes. And that's a term that I learnt off watching Dexter. But when you do that, and press enter, Google will find you loads of websites across the net that are offering you free blood style brushes. And here's one that I actually chose. So I'll click on that and you'll see that when you do that, it gives you an example of the kind of brushes you've got there and you can download them for free. Now, generally when you do that, all I'll suggest is that make sure you read the person who's provided this for you, make sure you read their terms and conditions. Now, they're not gonna kind of limit how you use them generally. Basically, the terms and conditions will say something like, look, you're free to use it on, on your own pictures. You can even use these brushes for commercial, com commercial? commercial purposes. Just don't start passing them around to anybody and everybody. If you wanna tell people about them, direct them to the website so they can download them directly themselves. And that's generally the terms and conditions that you'll have. So once you've actually downloaded your brushes, you simply double click and they install into Photoshop and you'll always find them amongst all your other brushes generally way down the bottom here. And these are an example here of the ones that I've downloaded from that particular website. So to apply this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, out of camera or out of Lightroom image at the bottom of my layer stack. I'm just going to add a blank layer because I want to add this blood onto its own layer so that I can then use opacity and blend modes just to help it look much more realistic. I then need to choose a color. So I'm going to go to my foreground color, click on the foreground color to bring up the color picker. By default, it's in red and I want it to be quite a dark red. I used to use quite a bright red before now, but my wife, she's a, an ex-paramedic and she's always tell me that the blood was too bright. There's too much oxygen in that blood. It needs to be a lot darker. So I actually now bring it right down, really, really low down. Now, incidentally, when you're using the color picker, when you've got this big square here and you've actually chosen your color, if you drag over to the left-hand side, you can desaturate it. If you go to the right-hand side, it adds saturation. If you go up, it brightens. If you go down, it darkens. So I'm gonna go kind of like in the bottom right-hand area down here. And you can see the color you've chosen from this um, rectangle here at the top here where it says new. That's the actual color that you're now choosing. So we'll click OK, and that color is now over in my foreground color. So I'll go to my brushes and I'm going to choose a brush way down here and we'll go for this one just around about there. Click out of the way to get rid of that actual uh, dialog box and you can see now by default when I'm bringing the brush over my image, it's obviously it's way too big, but this gives you an idea of the kind of shape that it's going to lay down when we actually apply this brush onto my image. So I can decrease the size of that with my left bracket key. And then what I can do is just paint down onto my subject. But you'll see when I do that, it doesn't actually look that realistic. The blood, although it was quite dark, is now showing up, showing up still quite bright, but it doesn't look like it's interacting with his skin very well and looking like it's mapping properly and, and blending in. So to make that happen, what we're gonna do is use blend modes. So over here, the layer that's got the blood on, I'm gonna change that to overlay. And when I do that, you'll notice the blood darkens down, but it also kind of maps in a little bit better to the contours of his skin. So we can do that, and we can actually then start using opacity and painting the blood all over his body. However, what I would like to do is just go one step further. 
If we come to the top left hand corner of your screen when using a brush, you've got a little icon here, it looks like a little folder, and it's got three brush heads in it. When you click on that, it brings up the brush presets, and this is where you can change how your brush interacts when you actually apply it. So I'm gonna to go to Shape Dynamics. Now, when we use this, you can see there's a little area at the bottom. This gives you a preview of what your brush is gonna look like once you start playing around with these sliders. So I'm gonna to go to Size Jitter, and a little bit on the old angle jitter, just a touch. I'm gonna to go to Scattering, and you can see that when I bring the slider to the right-hand side, more of those blood splatters are appearing in the preview. So we'll go for something like that, so it kind of spreads them out a bit. If we add count, it adds even more of them, but I'm gonna keep that quite low down. And transfer, I'm gonna use opacity, because I don't want the blood to be the same kind of density across the whole brush stroke, I want it to vary, so I can do that with opacity. You'll also notice there's little controls in here, where it says control, there's a few options available to me. I'm using the one that says pen pressure, and that's just because I'm using a, a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, which has pressure sensitivity built into it. So the more I press down, or the harder I press down, or the lighter I press, it changes the opacity of the brush as I do so. So now that we've done that, what I can then do is just come in and start adding little blood, uh, paint strokes over my model. So I can start adding a little bit of blood there. I can move around, use a space bar. I'll zoom in on his face. I can actually add a little bit of a nosebleed, make the brush really small, and just start painting a little bit around his nose, just adding a bit of a, a nosebleed like so. Like that, I've got some blood around his eye. Very, very simple, very easy, like so. And the more I go over, the more it lays down and fills in the blood. So that's one area that I did there. I might want to add a bit of a scratch. Let's just zoom out just a fraction. So we can zoom out just a bit. I want to add a bit of a scratch on this guy's back here. And again, in those brushes that I downloaded from that particular website, there's quite a good one here that looks like a scratch. So when I click on that, let's just click away to remove that box. You can see it's way too big. But again, that gives you a preview of what that brush is gonna look like. Each time you change the brush, you're gonna to have to then come back into your brush presets, change those to how you want it to look. Again, you can look in the preview at the bottom just to see how it's interacting. Something like that, we'll go to get rid of smoothing. I'll go to transfer again. I like to use that opacity. So now what I can do, we can add a little bit of a scratch. So I might actually do this on another blank layer to give me control over it. And I'll just paint down a little bit of a scratch on his back around that area there. So you can see you can have really f a lot of fun doing this, adding in scratches and bruises. That's not looking that good there. Actually, I can do something with that one. That there you can see is just a little bit too much. If you want to get rid of it, obviously I could use a layer mask or just get a, uh, an eraser and remove it like so. I'm gonna remove it just a little bit so it looks like a smudge. If the actual blood isn't dark enough for you, on this layer here you can just go to image adjustments and uh, let's go for levels. And then you can use the mid-tone slider to darken or brighten the blood, just to control it just that little bit more if you've not got it exactly how you want it and click OK. So that is it, I mean that's really simple. A way that you can use free brushes available to you online, just go to Google, type in free blood splatter brushes or anything of that kind of nature, and you'll find loads that you can then use within Photoshop to add in your own effects. Okay, quick break, and then I wanna show you how we can do a black eye and give a little bit of swelling and add some blood onto the canvas. Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis, and I want to take just a few moments of your time to let you know about a full-length downloadable tutorial I've recently added to my website called The Editor. Now the tutorial kicks off with a look behind the scenes, so you get to see how the original photograph was taken, so you get an understanding of the lighting setup, camera settings, what kind of background to use, and more before we then head over into Lightroom with the RAW file and get to work on the retouching. We're going to go through preparing our RAW file, cleaning up the image, improving the lighting, the colour, spot removal, skin retouching, and then how to make the eyes really pop before taking things up a level and heading over into Photoshop. Now one thing to mention, if you don't use Lightroom, that's absolutely no problem at all because everything can also be done in Camera Raw. Now once we're in Photoshop, this is when we want to get to work on adding character, depth and dimension. As I show you how to use dodging and burning techniques on faces, how to add in that great looking coloured background and spotlight, how to add that painterly cartoon look 
even how to make a cigar look like it's a light, smoking the healthy way, or in other words, the Photoshop way, and much, much more. Now the fantastic thing about this tutorial is that I show you how to work completely, 100% non-destructively, so that at any stage during the retouching or at a later date, you can dive in and make changes without having to redo lots of work, saving you lots of time and frustration. Now also with this tutorial, you get the original raw file so you can follow along, which is definitely the best way to learn. You get the full layered Photoshop file, the final image, plus a bonus video, not forgetting the 15 videos that takes you through the entire retouching from start to finish. So folks, that's the editor, the full length downloadable tutorial available now on my website, glyndurris.com. Okay, so before we jump over and start working on making the guy look like he's got a, a black eye and some swelling, I just want to add some blood onto the canvas because to make this realistic in the final image, obviously the guys have got blood on them, they'd also have a little bit of blood on the floor where they've rubbed against it as they're rolling around and tussling. So we're going to do that quickly now. So same procedure as before, I'm going to create a blank layer. I've got my brush using my uh, splatter brush. I can choose whichever one of the ones that I want from all the ones that I downloaded off that site. I've got my red color and then I'll just come in and start painting a little bit of the blood on the canvas. But the problem with that is all I've done is just painted it onto, onto the picture flat. But obviously the canvas that the guys are on is going away into the distance. So the perspective is all wrong on the blood. But we can alter that. We can go to the edit menu, choose transform and we have perspective in there. When, that, when we click on that, we get these transform handles around our blood. Now I want to click on the, any of the bottom left or the bottom right. And when I do that and drag to the left, we'll see that it changes the perspective of the blood here so that it does look as if it's lying flat on the actual canvas and kind of follows the perspective of the canvas. So we can bring out the, uh, bring out the handles here to sort of widen the bottom, make the top end smaller, so it gives that perspective. I might want to scale it, so I'll go to Edit, Transform, and then Scale, and then I can click in the middle and just drag that down a bit and just reposition it exactly how I want it to look, but something like that. And then obviously I'll just change the blend mode to overlay and then lower the opacity, because it only wants to be a quick kind of like scuff mark on the actual canvas. Now there is a quicker way of doing that before we carry on with doing the eye, and I'm just going to quickly show you some keyboard shortcuts. So those are basically we've just added our uh, we've added our blood splatter on there. If we press Command or Control T, that brings up the transform handles. And now depending on what keyboard you're using, if you hold down your Command, Option, and Shift, or Control, Alt, and Shift, what you can then do is click on any of the handles in the bottom corners, uh, and then click and drag out. So that that is a keyboard shortcut to give us the perspective control like so so we drag out that that way if we then let go we're then back into the normal transform so i'm going to drag on the top middle and bring that down just like we did before but without having to go to all the menus so it's a very very quick way of working we'll press enter to commit that change the blend mode to overlay and then just lower the opacity down just so it looks like a little bit of a scuff mark something like that it's just a finishing touch just when we're adding in blood onto the floor. As before, it didn't look that realistic. This is just one of those things that going that extra mile or just paying attention to the details can really lift your retouching and make everything kind of blend in and look that much more realistic. Okay, so to finish off then, here's just maybe a couple of things we can do with the eye to make it look as if he's got a bruise and a little bit of swelling. Uh, again, I'm going to use a brush, but this time, rather than using that blood splatter brush, I'm just going to use a normal brush that comes with Photoshop. So I'll come to the top of the screen, I'll choose a nice soft edge brush. I then need to choose my colour, but this time, because it's not a cut, it's more of a bruise. I'm going to click on the foreground colour, and I'm going to choose something in this kind of area here, around about there kind of mauvey kind of colour. Again, fairly dark, so I'm going to use blend modes, and that'll, that'll darken it down just a little bit more, help it look much more realistic and blend in. Uh, we'll change the blend mode, actually add a blank layer, change the blend mode of this blank layer to overlay, and this time, first of all, I'm going to lay down the brush just at 10%, because I'm just going to concentrate on the outside of the eye as opposed to being right in the, uh, the dark part. So bring the brush size down, Nice and soft brush, and I'm just going to paint a little bit around the outside of the eye, like so. Just so that's the where the bruise is extending onto his face. And then what I can also do is maybe add another blank layer, change the blend mode of that layer again to overlay, 
Using the same color, I can then go to maybe 30% opacity. Make sure there's no settings on the brush. And then just add a darker area nearer to the eye. Because you tend to find when people have got a black eye, the center part is much darker. And as the bruise spreads out a bit, that's where it softens down. So something like that. Both of these layers I could then put into a group by shift clicking so they're both highlighted, going to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel and choosing new group from layers. I'll call that I just so we know which one it is. And then we can use opacity to control how much of a bruise he's got on the eye. So it doesn't need to be much, maybe something around about that there's looking fine. We turn it on and off. We can see that's a bit of a bruise. Now we could also take it one step further, make it look as if there's a little, little bit of swelling in there. So let's go down to the, the uh, layer that came straight from Lightroom at the bottom of my layer stack. I'll click on that. And because we're going to use Liquify, which is a filter, I'm going to first of all convert this to a smart filter to give us the flexibility if I want to come back in at a later stage and change any of the settings that I applied within Liquify. So now that we've got it turned into a smart filter, we can tell that by the icon that comes in the bottom right hand corner of the thumbnail. Then we can go to filter and liquefy. And again, this is all just fun, how we can start to make people look as if they've been, I don't know, 10 rounds with Mike Tyson in his heyday. So we'll kind of get the magnifying glass, let's zoom in onto his eye here. You're not gonna see the bruising we've painted in because we've gone to the bottom of the layer stack, which hasn't got it applied to it. But what I can do now then, let's make it look as if there's a little bit of swelling in here. I think first of all, I'll get the freeze mask tool from over on the left-hand side of the toolbar. And I'm gonna freeze down the middle part here. Whoops, I need to make sure actually I'm going on the, uh, where it says show mask just here. Click on show mask, it then allows me to paint with this red overlay so I can see any area that I'm freezing. I don't want that area to be affected. In fact, just a little bit too much there. So let's just bring that off. Just a thin streak right down the middle of his eye because I don't want this to be affected when I add the swelling in. Because what I want to do is keep that area nice and narrow so the areas around it get bigger and it kind of gives the feeling that his eye is closed over. So then I can come to the, once I've done that, I can then come to the bloat tool in the toolbar on the left hand side. Keep the settings nice and low. I've got brush size at 80, brush density at 10, but just experiment with those to see what it kind of gives you there. And then I'll increase the size of the brush. I'm just gonna push down a few times. You can start to see it stretches the pixels and gives the impression of them swelling up. So that's the top uh, eyelid. Go to the bottom eyelid. Press down a few times, and the area where this covered on that red overlay is not going to be affected. And I actually turn that, sh that mask off now, and you can kind of see that the areas around the middle of the eye have been uh, increased, they've been bloated, hence the name of the tool. And to see what that's done, we've got, we can do a little bit of a preview. We can even go to the reconstruct and use the reconstruct slider to see the before and after and control. If we think we've done too much, we can bring it back just a little bit. But there you can see the before and after, before and after. And you can really play with this and really dictate how much of a swelling he's actually got on his eye. And obviously once we've done that, we can then click OK, go back into Photoshop, and then we see the effect applied with the bruising on top of it as well. So there you go, just a couple of things we can do in a picture such as this where we've not used a makeup artist to apply blood before the photo shoot. This is how we can apply blood to our models using brushes in Photoshop and also give the impression of some swelling there using the liquify filter. Okay, so just one extra thing to mention when you are actually adding in blood and bruises and scratches, it's like anything in Photoshop, just do a little bit at a time. This is a lot of fun, a real lot of fun, but very, very quickly, it can get very addictive and before you know it, you've done way too much and your picture starts to look like a crime scene or maybe even an episode of Dexter. So treat it like when you're doing dodging and burning, do a little bit, Go away, then come back and look at your picture with fresh eyes. And then you'll need you'll know then straight away if you need to do any more or if maybe you've done a little bit too much, you need to take some off. So that's the only advice I'd probably give you or extra advice I'd give you when you're adding in scratches, blood and bruises and all those kind of effects. 
But hey, that's uh, that's the end of this episode. As always, if you've got any questions and comments, tips, tricks or techniques that you'd like to see in future episodes, by all means, just let me know. Make sure you click on the subscribe button as well so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post out. And if you could share this with anybody that you know that you think might like to see the kind of content I'm posting each and every week in the episodes that we put out and also the extra videos, if you could share that, that'd be absolutely fantastic. But in the meantime, have a great week and I'll see you soon.